And now for a very different kind of classic and a very different kind of tale, Catwoman's. From the 1940s through today, comic book readers have known her as the Princess of Plunder. She's the arch villainess created as a foil for Gotham City's Dark Knight, Batman. And there's clearly an attraction between the two of them, and it just about boils over in this scene from the Batman TV series of the 1960s. I can give you more happiness than anyone in the world. Catwoman, it would be so easy for you to tread the path of righteousness. I'm afraid not, Batman. For In Character, our series on famous fictional characters, NPR's Allison Keyes tells us how Catwoman's hisses and purrs have made her a symbol of feminine power. The first glimpse many people got of Catwoman was watching her strut onto the campy set of the 1960s TV series, Batman. Batman! 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 Jaws around the country dropped as six-foot-tall Julie Newmar oozed onto the set. Shimmering in a black lurex catsuit, complete with cat ears and a low-slung golden belt, this villain definitely had a feline's fascination with shiny objects. But the crime-fighting duo Batman and Robin made her arch her back, and not in a good way. You feline devil! What have you done with Robin? Aw, is that any way to greet an old friend, Batman? Not even a hello, how are you? Teachers and manners, fellas. Catwoman, says Julie Newmar, is comprised of the most delicious human traits. She even made a list, determined, calculating, and wise. She says men tell her she was their first crush, but women tell Newmar they love the character because she's smart, gorgeous, and... You feel more power. You're both hidden and exposed at the same... You're hidden by the black. You're exposed by the tightness of the outfit. You have on these high heels, long nails, I mean, your eyelashes, your hair, you know, the, oh. Newmar's Catwoman tempered her amoral heart with a wistful innocence. Eartha Kitt's version was fierce. Now, are you coming quietly, Catwoman, or must we use force? Your silver-tongued oratorio has convinced me, Batman. I hereby remit myself to your muscular custody. Kitt says she didn't think of her Catwoman as a superhero, but she did see her as powerful and autobiographical. That's the way I am, according to the way the character is. I didn't have to think about how would Catwoman be. I just went ahead and did myself. They all gave me curious stirrings in my utility belt. Adam West played Batman and, of course, Bruce Wayne on the classic 60s TV series. He says Catwoman was a confusing bad girl, but never boring. And West says Batman really had feelings for her. She was you know, sexy and attractive, but she certainly had her own agenda, even though it wasn't terribly honest. 86-year-old Jerry Robinson helped define the character of Catwoman, along with the creator of Batman, Bob Kane. Catwoman's real name is Selina Kyle. Robinson says he visualized her as a master criminal. Well, she was agile and she was athletic. She was a um, highly proficient burglar, but she was not a heroine. She was one of the protagonists. You can't deny there's something between us. You're right. And I'm afraid it's the law. Never trifle with the affections of a woman until next time. Today's Catwoman is changed with the times. Will Pfeiffer writes the current Catwoman comic. He says her backstory is as tangled as... Well, a ball of string. She was orphaned, she has a sister, and a shadowy past as a prostitute. But she's never been beaten. She really comes out on top. She uses her experiences and moves on from them, and she has fun while she's doing it, I think. Catwoman isn't the type to sit around twiddling her claws, waiting for anyone to bail her out of trouble, even when the offer comes from Bruce Wayne. Selena, if you're in some kind of trouble, I wish you'd tell me. Perhaps I can help. I really care about you. I haven't felt this way in a long, long time. Thanks, Bruce, but I've never been able to play the damsel in distress. This was one of the first female characters we saw in, on television that really spoke to empowerment. Suzanne Cologne is author of Catwoman, The Life and Times of a Feline Fatale. Not only empowerment, but uh, a proto-feminism that was very sexy and pretty and female and yet very take charge. I mean, 
this woman had her own gang of men who wore little cat ears and striped shirts to please her, <laughs> knowing that she was the boss. Cologne points to a scene from the 1992 movie Batman Returns, where Michelle Pfeiffer rescues a robbery victim, then scolds her. You make it so easy, don't you? Always waiting for some bad man to save you. I am Catwoman. Hear me roar. She doesn't like the goody two-shoes side of women um, that we're taught to be. You know, women are taught to be trusting. We're taught to be nice, better nice than offensive and possibly get ourselves out of a dangerous situation. A few things have changed since Catwoman started out in 1940. She's had her own comic for 15 years. Sure, she still wears the suit, but it's functional now. She's still got the whip, but no more high heels that could slip off of a rooftop. Selena's had some martial arts training, and she has a daughter. Catwoman sees herself now as a guardian of the poor and disadvantaged, but that doesn't stop her from committing a little larceny every now and then. Bottom line, Catwoman wants what she wants and drat the consequences. I'll do everything I can to rehabilitate you. Marry me. Everything except that. A wife, no matter how beauteous or affectionate, would severely impair my crime fighting. I can reform. Honestly, I can. What about Robin? Robin? Oh, I've got it. We'll kill him. Oh, well, some things never change. Author Suzanne Cologne says Catwoman gives us a sense of what we might be able to do, but it's not necessarily a good idea to unleash all that in daily life. Allison Keys, NPR News. Catwoman, gosh, I remember her. You know, sometimes on this show, I not only wish I had her pointy ears, I wish I had her whip. We'd like to know what characters have shaped your life. Head to the In Character blog at npr.org. Your essay could end up on the radio. Meow. That's All Things Considered from NPR News. Andrea Seabrook is back next week. I'm Jackie Lydon.